everyone, it's Greer. Welcome back to The Lemon Abroad. Today I'm in my kitchen in Palermo and I am making one of my favorite dishes. I fell in love with hummus when I was visiting Jerusalem and now I probably make it at least once or twice a week. Hummus is really easy and fast to make, and like many of the recipes that I share with you, it's easily adaptable to your specific tastes. Usually when I make hummus, I use canned chickpeas, but today I'm making a very special version. Today I'm making a hummus recipe from Mai, the creator of the food blog Almond and Fig. Mai is from Palestine and she created her food blog to pass down memories of growing up in Palestine and the food to her children now that she lives in the United States. Mai is also one of the founders of the April is for Arab Food initiative on Instagram. Here you'll find lots of food bloggers and chefs from around the Arab world sharing their recipes and their culture with one another and with all of you. It's a wonderful initiative and I've learned so much by following them. Mai has very generously shared this recipe on her website almondandfig.com and very kindly let me recreate it on my YouTube channel today. So because we're making Mai's hummus, I went ahead and did the extra step of using dried chickpeas because I think it really does make a difference. So take a look at how I started preparing the chickpeas last night. Okay, so if you would like to make your hummus using dried chickpeas, here I have my bag of dried chickpeas. And I also have some baking soda. I'm just going to put a small amount of baking soda into the water that I'll soak with the dried chickpeas. Mai recommends about one teaspoon. So Mai has listed an exact recipe on her website. I am going to be basically cutting it in half to make it for myself. I think that this should be plenty because the chickpeas, after they soak overnight and cook, they will increase in their size uh, pretty dramatically. So it should be plenty, but even if it is more, it's fine because I love chickpeas and I will definitely find a way to use them. Okay, so we have the dried chickpeas, and now I'm just going to put a small amount of baking soda into the chickpeas, and I'm going to cover them with water. Okay, so I've filled up this bowl as much as I can with water. I will leave the chickpeas now and check on them in the morning. Okay, so as you can see here, the chickpeas have increased in size and I probably should use a bigger bowl. So now that the chickpeas have soaked overnight, they are ready to be cooked. The first thing I'm going to do per my instructions is rinse them under cold water. Then I will put them in a pot cover them with water and add another teaspoon of baking soda. We're going to bring the chickpeas to a boil and then let them simmer. I'm going to start checking on them um, periodically and around maybe 45 minutes they should be nearly done. We'll see. This is an experiment. So let's get started. Okay, so the chickpeas are boiling, so I'm going to take off the lid so that they don't boil over. And you can see that there is this um, foam on top, so I'm just going to skim that off. So I'm just going to keep an eye on them as they cook down, and I'm going to keep skimming off the white foam as it develops, and then I'm going to start testing them to see if they're ready. Of course, it's really important to keep an eye on them to make sure that 
the water doesn't boil over. Okay, so the chickpeas have been cooking for, um, they've been simmering for about 30 minutes. So the skin is kind of starting to peel away from them and my test is whether or not you squish them and they fall apart because maybe if they don't like okay this one's a little hard and this one fell apart so I'm going to cook them for a few more minutes just to make sure that they're all cooked through and ready to go okay so since the chickpeas are almost done cooking I am going to take some of the cooking water and of course be careful it's boiling water that we need to reserve for later Make sure to not get any chickpeas in there as well. All right, so now the chickpeas are cooked. You can see that the skins of the chickpeas were starting to separate from them. I took out most of the water uh, to reserve it for later, and now I'm just going to drain what's left. Now, Mai says you can also add some water maybe back into the pot. Uh, this will help cool the chickpeas down because we want to bring them back to room temperature before we blend them. So I'm just going to rinse them off in a little bit of water. All right, so now that the chickpeas have had a chance to cool off, I'm going to tell you about the other ingredients that you will need. Mai has a whole list of the ingredients and measurements on her website. I am cutting those about in half to make uh, just one portion for myself and this is the ratio of ingredients that I usually use. Mai says as well, when you're beginning to add all the ingredients, it's better to go slowly and just add a little bit at a time in order to not overwhelm or not be able to remove something if you put in too much. All right, so after chickpeas, one of the other key ingredients is tahini. Tahini is a paste made of sesame seeds and this is a very important ingredient. We also, of course, have garlic. I always start with one clove of garlic and then you can add more. We also have a lemon to juice. I usually use about a half a lemon just for myself when I'm making it. And then a pinch of salt, some olive oil, of course. I also have the cooking water from the chickpeas that I saved before I drained them. So with that said, it's time to make hummus. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking some of my chickpeas. Bad one. Here you can also see if any of your chickpeas are maybe not good. So you can take them out. Okay, so I'm going to take my chickpeas and put them in the blender. Maybe a little more. Okay, that looks about right. That looks about how much I think is usually in there, but if not, I can always add some more chickpeas later. That is what is so nice about making hummus is that if you go slowly, it's very forgiving because you can always add some more chickpeas, some more tahini, some more olive oil, um, some more garlic, anything, but uh, you can't take it away once it's already in there. So if you go slow, you'll be able to adjust it as needed. All right, so my suggest to blend it until it is creamy, just the chickpeas by themselves. Okay, so I've just blended the chickpeas here but my blender isn't so strong, so I had to add uh, some of the chickpea cooking water so that I could make it creamier before I add the other ingredients. So you should blend it to a pretty creamy consistency, uh, maybe even more than this, but I'm going to start here. So first I'm going to just peel and take the root part off of the garlic, and then I'm going to juice half a lemon 
and I'm going to put in maybe a few spoonfuls like this of a tahini. We'll see. Um, I'm pretty much just guesstimating and I'm going to see how it turns out after I put in the first round of ingredients and then see if there's anything I have to adjust. And I'm also going to add just a pinch of salt. Okay, so now that I have the flavor pretty much down, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil, a few spoonfuls, I guess. Okay, so here we have the final result. And I've added a little more lemon juice, a little more salt, a little more garlic. Um, but that's what's so great about this recipe is that you can uh, keep adding a little at a time until you get the flavor that you want and the consistency that you want. It's all about balancing the liquid ingredients and the thickening ingredients like the chickpeas or the tahini. So you can pretty much keep going slowly, slowly until you get it how you want it. So now that the hummus is in its dish, I am going to add some spices. I'm going to lightly toast a few pine nuts on the stove, paprika, cumin. And then, of course, we will finish with some olive oil drizzled on top. And here is the final result. So to go along with my hummus, I've cut up some cucumbers and small tomatoes, and I have some bread. I like to dip veggies into the hummus and I also like to use the bread and make a little uh, sandwich type thing with the veggies. So I can't wait to try the hummus. All right, everyone, there you have it. This is how you can make hummus at home from scratch. Of course, if you're ever in a pinch and you didn't know the night before that you needed to soak the chickpeas or you don't have the time to boil them, you can always use a can of chickpeas I usually use one can like this just for myself and it's the perfect amount. I want to again thank Mai from Almond and Fig for being so, so generous and letting me make her hummus recipe for you guys on my YouTube channel. Please check out her Instagram and website. It's almondandfig.com or at almondandfig. I'll leave the information in the description box below as well as her initiative April is for out of food. It's a hashtag and it has its own Instagram page. So please be sure to check it out because there are so many beautiful different recipes from around the world that I really think you'll enjoy learning more about. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it and I hope that you'll try making hummus at home. It's quick, it's healthy, you can adapt it to your own taste and it is delicious. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Ciao!